Hello, so we are on week two of our intense periodic table science 1950s themed outfit. So in the last video or last week, I made the skirt portion of the outfit, which is a poodle skirt style with instead of a poodle on it, it had an Erlenmeyer flask and go check it out if you haven't already. I think it turned out absolutely adorable. I love it so much. So now we're on to part two of our outfit. And if we refer back to our sketch, that is about the sweater. So this is based off of my original periodic table sweater, which is right here. But I wanted to make kind of a new and updated one with a, with a little bit of a vintage twist. So first I wanted to talk through how I made this sweater so we can, you guys could potentially make one at home if you wanted to, and so you could better understand how I made the current sweater we're gonna make in this video. So this periodic table sweater all started a couple years ago when I was scrolling the Pinterests and I found free patterns for a periodic table blanket. Somebody had gone in and created the knitting charts to make every single element on the periodic table. And I thought, oh, this is, this is sweet, but uh, I don't need a blanket. Well, what if I can make something else? And there are these things in crochet and knitting called a granny square, if you're unfamiliar with those terms. It's just like a little crocheted or knitted square, a pattern that people then make a bunch of them and they stick them together and they make blankets or a bunch of pants, a bunch of other stuff. And I went, wait, isn't there a way that you can make a granny square cardigan? So I looked up the pattern to make a granny square, granny square cardigan and I thought, I just need a bunch of squares and just stick them all together and make a sweater. So that is what I did for this. So every single periodic block you see on this sweater was an individual square. I knitted them all as individual squares. And then I went in and I pieced them together to make one flat piece. So I actually, uh, actually crocheted them together because at the time I was a lot better at crocheting than I was knitting. So they're all, you can kind of see it. It's black and white, so it's kind of hard to see. So this is a, like a crocheted seam. So then I went in, knitted all the squares, crocheted them together, and then put on the ribbed cuffing and kind of a bottom around portion that's also crochet. I make no apologies for this knitting crochet mashup. But it turned out really good, actually. Way better than I was expecting and exactly kind of how I envisioned it in my brain. So, that is the story of how I made this periodic table sweater. So let's take a look at how we're gonna make this next one. So we have to start with the, still kind of like outline of that granny square sweater. So that involves making the back, two front panels, and then the sleeve panel and stitching them all together, folding it in half and making a cardigan. So I wanna keep the same length of the sleeves because this, Sleeve length works for me. So that means there are, the sleeve actually starts here. So one, two, three, four, four squares that are making up the sleeve like lengthwise and three. There are three, there's three squares around the whole width of the sleeve. So that means my sleeve panels need to be, end up having 12 periodic table blocks. Yeah, that's right. Then I wanna take a look at the kind of front panel and back panel. So the front panel on this can, is, what is it? It's two squares across. So here's the front panel, it's two squares across. So we still wanna keep how wide the front panels are and we wanna keep how wide the back panel is. And the back panel is five squares across. So those numbers are going to remain the same on our diagram. Where it's gonna be different from this sweater is instead of having, what is it? Oh, where's my seam? One, two, three, four, five down. I wanna come and crop this and make it come to my waist. So I can approximately measure. And here's about where I want it to hit and I'll add about, let's see, about an inch or like half an inch of ribbing. So that means instead of having all five blocks down, I only want three. So my front panels, are going to be two by three squares and my back panel is going to be a five by three square. Or that's, they're not technically squares, those are rectangles. 
So that's how I came up with the panel decisions for what I wanted to do. And instead of making every single individual square and then having to connect them together, which was fun, I guess, sort of, I think I want to just knit the entire panel at once. So again, instead of each individual block, put them together, I'm just gonna go ahead and knit the front panel as a whole panel, knit the sleeves as a whole panel, knit the front back panel as a whole panel. I think that'll be a lot easier to put it together and there will be a lot less little yarn ends to put all together. So that is my plan for this periodic table sweater and a little bit of insight into how I made my previous one. So again, if you wanna try it at home, go for it. It's a lot of fun. I'll link where the free patterns for the periodic table things are. Let's go ahead and get to knitting, woohoo! Hello, pardon whatever the heck my appearance is. This was a probably not making it on my pajamas day because man, I'm tired and I just, I'm gonna sit back here for most of the day and knit, but just some progress on the front panel of the sweater is all done. So you can see we got like, what was that? Boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine and neon. So this is gonna be the front panel. I have also already messed up. Uh, according to my diagram, the numbering of the blocks or like the way the blocks were gonna be ordered. So I went in and changed my diagram and made it super random now. So instead of having all of the blocks in a number order that made any sense periodically, <laughs> they're just random periodic table blocks, which is still a lot of fun because I just frankly didn't have the energy to undo all of this work that I had already done. So we're just gonna keep on and on and I'm gonna continue to make my way through season three of the Umbrella Academy because I'm behind on that show by many years because there's already a season four. So let's, let's get to knitting. So I just wanted to show you where I got yesterday with this. Not as far as I got the day before, but that's fine. I have almost the front, second front panel done. So that's great, woohoo, some more elements done. I get to spend a lot of time in a car this weekend on a trip, so that will be prime knitting time. And I also just wanted to show you, I went ahead and like copy and pasted all of these, oh, it's lost to me. Except it's lost, but I am here. I am here. Oh, there we go. So I went ahead and copy and pasted all of basically the patterns and stuff in the right order according to my diagram. So that way, I won't make the same mistake that I made before. So that is my diagram. So I can follow these charts for the sleeves and for the back and be all done. So that's what I'm gonna do today. And I'll hop in the car this afternoon and hopefully knit away. So thanks guys. Hello friends. I thought we'd take a quick break from just watching me knit and different knitting updates and talk a little bit about alternative periodic tables. People aren't entirely satisfied with the conventional shape of the periodic table. They think that we put too many like artificial breaks in the table. The spacing doesn't actually reflect the continuous nature of the elements. So people have come up with a few different shapes that I'll share with you. So there's this really weird one that's based on the quantum numbers of the elements, which is confusing. There's these cool, this cool kind of racetrack one, which kind of makes a little bit more sense. And there's also a pretty cool spiral looking one, which I'd hate to try to use it to take a chemistry test in college, but is kind of pretty to look at. And there are a lot more if you Google alternative periodic tables that you can find out there that all reflect different things. So that's just a little bit about periodic tables. Let's get back to that knitting project. A little check-in with our knitting project for this periodic table sweater, which is looking real good. I did get a lot of knitting done over the time I spent in the car and where I ended up with our trip. So let's see how far I've gotten. We have, what is this? One of the front panels. The whole back, I finished the whole back. One sleeve. <laughs> And the other side or other front panel. So the last piece I need to make and I started it already is the last sleeve And then I'll have all the pieces that I need to have to put together the cardigan and then put all the trim around the edge Like we see in the little reference diagram that I drew myself so I'm gonna keep working on that final sleeve and Catch up with you after I do that Hello Notice anything different? 
Oh, the space behind me is empty. We're actually in the process of buying a house and getting ready to move. So things have been a little chaotic the past few days and obviously most everything is gone. <laughs> But just an update on this sweater project, which was a horrible time to start it while trying to buy a house. But anyhow, I have finished all of the pieces for it. Woohoo! All five pieces. So the two front panels, two sleeves, and the back. And now I have to do what is called blocking. If you're unfamiliar with yarn crafting, basically blocking is when you take your pieces and pin them out and stretch them to the right size and smooth them out and then do something to basically set the fibers into that shape. So I have acrylic yarn, which means I can just use a little bit of heat to help set the fibers in that shape. But if you were to use like a wool yarn or a cotton yarn, there are different processes to blocking as well. And it just helps your piece, um, one, flatten out, because you can see here like the edges are very curly. So blocking helps flatten that out. It makes your stitches look better. Um, I used to not block my pieces and then I did for one project and it looked so much better. I was like, oh yeah, I gotta do this to all my projects. I'm gonna go ahead and block all of my pieces and then I get to sew them all together, put on the finishing touches and I will see you guys when the sweater is complete for the full 1950 Science Ensemble. periodic table outfit is all complete the skirt and the sweater and it turned out even maybe even better than I could have imagined it turning out I'm absolutely so excited about it I love the skirt more than I can say and then my new and improved periodic table sweater I think just turned out so cute I wanted kind of that cropped kind of more vintagey style and then also to have something that didn't exactly mimic the other periodic table sweater I've already made. So since, since this video was all about the sweater, let's take a closer look at that and catch every single thread along my rings. But I think it turned out really good. So here's like the back of it with all the elements. And here's the front. And we got the little, little sleepy cups little ribbing on the edge. I think it, I mean, turned out honestly probably just as good as I think it could have given my skill level and all of the above. So I'm really, really excited about this periodic table sweater. I can't wait to wear it more. Can't wait to wear this skirt out, honestly. It is, as a reminder, fan freaking tastic honestly considering making some more because I just love it so much. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video and this whole science outfit crafting. Now you know a little bit about if you want to make your own periodic table sweater, how to do that. Uh, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, check me out on Instagram and keep it sciencey.